I just want to preface this video by saying if you're new to all of this, if you're new to making instructional videos and you're a little bit intimidated by how tricky it's going to be, all I want to say is don't stress too much, just start small. All right, just have a go. Something's better than nothing. Try and create a small video first, a really small one. Don't worry too much about editing and all that sort of stuff. Just go for something small. So I just wanted to get that up front before we really start. Thanks. Hey guys, Michael here. So in this video, I just want to talk to you a little bit about making instructional videos. So let's just jump right in and give you some tips. So an easy way to get started with instructional videos is to do a screen recording or to create screen recordings. And there's a number of software tools that you can use for that um, on this side of the screen. Have a look at these. Um, I've used all of these. Um, I really like Loom. I like Screencast-O-Matic. Um, but having a Mac, I just like using QuickTime. It's quite easy to use. So firstly, Loom. Just go to loom.com and when you sign up, you just go over to new video and it gives you a few options, screen plus camera, screen only or camera only. So you've got lots of options. All right, easy done. With Screencast-O-Matic, you need to go to their website, just Google it. And when you come to it, just go to launch free recorder and it's going to ask you to download the launcher and it will work off your computer. Very similar to Loom, it has a video camera as well as um, screen recording. With QuickTime Player, when you launch it, it will just bring up this bar at the top. So what you then do is click on File, New Movie Recording is the camera, Audio Recording is there as well, and New Screen Recording is there. You just click on that and it brings up the options that you are looking for. So remember that you can just put anything on the screen and record it, PowerPoint presentation or Google Slides presentation. Anything that you can think of to put on the screen, you can record part of the screen, you can record the whole screen. Try and keep your videos short. I mean, short is very relative, of course. You might think 10 minutes is a short video. Um, students might think that one minute is a short video. A good video length would be between three to 10 minutes. You think about it, when you saw the length of this video, what was your reaction? Did you think, it's going to be that long? Ugh. All right, think about how the students feel. They feel that times 10, right? They don't want to watch it in the first place, probably. So let's try and keep our video short. And one way you can do that is through editing. So try and cut out the boring bits. If you um a lot, like I do, or if you pause and think, try and cut those bits out. So let's have a look at an example from this very film that I'm editing right now. So try and cut out the boring bits, yeah? If, um, if you um a lot, so try and cut out the boring bits. If, um, if, if, I like the boring bits. If you um a lot, like I do. In fact, if you make mistakes, you don't even need to stop recording, just record one video and then chop out the mistakes so you don't have to start over all the time. I'm finding as I film this that I do waffle on about some points and I might repeat myself so make sure you do cut out all that waffle as well. So try and find an editing tool that you are happy to use that is easy for you and just stick with it. Just get really good at that one tool. I mean I've been using iMovie for forever really and I find it the easiest tool. Um, there are better ones out there, but I just stick with what I'm good at because, you know, you get quick at it. If you don't have a Mac, most teachers that I know don't have a Mac these days, just use the one on Windows 10 that comes built in with it. It's called Windows Video Editor and it's really simple. It's got some great special effects on there, 3D and all the rest, um, and it does the job quite well. Another way for keeping videos short is just to film one concept at a time or one idea. Don't try and cram too much into your videos. Just keep it fairly simple to one concept. Students are more likely to watch multiple videos that are short than maybe looking at one 20 or 30 minute video. And the next thing I would suggest is having your own YouTube channel. YouTube streams a lot better than if you just put your videos on say Google Drive because YouTube just works better that way. So YouTube is definitely preferred, especially if it's a video that you're going to use again. If it's for a one and done video, then Google Drive or something like that is fine. But if it's a video that you know you will use over again, then definitely having your own YouTube channel is the way to go. And I've got to say, kids do like it when their teachers have a YouTube channel. 
So how do you get your edited video up on YouTube? Okay, well, let's have a look. So when you have finished your video, you need to export it as a file usually. So you want to export a file. Now this is using um, iMovie, so it would be different on whatever program you're using. But make sure you give it a file name. Uh, just check the size of the video. You might want to change the resolution if that's an option for you. Um, and then once that's done, then go to YouTube and just find the little icon up here that says create. Click on that and click on upload video and then you'll see this. And then you just find your video and drag it in there. Give it an appropriate name. I'm just going to leave it like that for now. Wait for it to upload and process. And it will generate some thumbnail options for you. Uh, or you can upload your own thumbnail. Then you need to come to this section here called audience and it asks you is it made for kids or not. Now the intuitive thing is to say yeah well of course it's made for kids and you'll tick that. However what that does is it makes your video available for the YouTube Kids app which is not really what we have in mind. So even though it seems counterintuitive, you actually want to say no it's not made for kids unless you're watching this as a primary school teacher and you actually want this content to be available for small children. Visibility, if you put it on private, you'll be the only person that can see it. You have to be logged into your account to watch it. Unlisted is a good option if you don't necessarily want the entire world finding your video, if you're going to be embedding it on a website or in Google Classroom, or if you just go public and just let the world discover your channel and find out what you're about and they can get the benefits from your video as well. You can schedule it as well. Then you can copy the link to your video and then paste it wherever you need it to go and then publish and away you go. And here's one more tip about creating a YouTube channel. Make sure that unless you're planning on retiring at the school that you're currently working at, make your channel not from your school account. Make sure you use it from a different account. Otherwise, if you do move schools one day and they close your account, goodbye YouTube channel. Make sure you include your face whenever you can. If you can have your face on your videos, then students will feel a connection with that. And at the time of making this video, it is during uh, COVID-19 remote learning. So at a time like this, this really is the time to be trying to put your face on your videos so that the students can connect. And my last suggestion is to add some music to your video. Now, depending on the situation, if you find that your students are distracted by music and it doesn't help, then maybe you just include a little snippet of music at the start of the intro of your video and a little bit at the end, um, if you like. Otherwise, having a little bit of low level music, very quiet, just gives your video a little bit more of a lift. Just make sure it's instrumental. Vocals are way too distracting, especially when you're talking. And also the music will actually cover over most of your edits, most of your cuts. It'll make the sound less choppy as well. But make sure obviously that your voice can be well heard and that the music is certainly not too loud. So from YouTube, you can click on the icon there and go down to YouTube Studio, which takes you to where everything happens on your YouTube channel. Go over to the side here and select Audio Library. And there you can find the music that you want for your video. You can search it by genre. Make sure you click Apply. You can search by Mood. Apply, double click. And also duration can be handy. So you might say longer than five minutes. And then you can test them out. They're actually really good these days. And because these are on the audio library on YouTube, they are free to use. You're not going to get a copyright strike. Uh, once you find one that you like, you just simply click on the download button, which is this one here. Then you can add it to your video via your editing suite. And then you can play around with the volumes to get it just right. So this kind of brings us to the end of the video. I have added some bloopers to the end of the video considering we've been talking about editing. And thanks so much for watching this video. I hope it was useful. See you next time. or so that you know that there will be something that you will use.
that's terrible. What am I even talking about? I'll edit that out. Yes, I shall. So there's plenty of advice I can give. I've been making a few of these for a while. No, I'm not going to say that. So let's just jump, jump. So let's just jump right in. So let's have a look at, let's have a, just use the one on Windows 10 that comes built in with it. It's called Windows Movie Maker. No, it's not. So an easy way to get started with video recording. So an easy way to get started with video editing. So an easy way to get started with video instructions. No. So an easy way to get started with instructional videos is to create a... Oh, that was good, but I lost train of thought. <sighs> so an easy way to get started with educational... No! So this kind of brings us to the end of the video. However, I am going... So this kind of brings us to the end of the video.